Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. It's, it's that time of year again for a lot of us. So welcome to our Dynamics GP year-end process webinar. So hopefully you only have to uh, do this once a year, uh, and you may have attended one of our previous webinars regarding the year-end process. Um, so for, for a lot of our GP clients, June 30 is the genuine end of financial year. So this webinar is particularly important for a, a large percentage of, uh, of our GP user base. So we really appreciate that you can come along today and, and join today's, uh, today's webinar where we, we genuinely run through that year-end process for you. Um, we do appreciate that there's a lot, of, a lot of clients and a lot of businesses that are happy to run the year-end process yourself uh, and, and we certainly encourage that. Um, we're also happy to help should you need that help. Uh, and I'll talk about that uh, a little bit at the end of the session today. So while we will go through a lot of content for you today, uh, don't be afraid. Uh, you don't actually have to take this all on yourself. If you do need our help, we're more than happy to help you with that year-end process. Now, before we get started, I just want to note uh, two relatively important things uh, for you. Firstly, we're happy to take your questions through today's webinar and we've allowed some time at the end of the session to answer those questions for you. So at any time during the presentation, on the right hand side of your screen in your GoToWebinar panel, there is a little questions box. At any time you can actually type a question into that section and we'll come back at the end of the webinar to answer those questions for you. And secondly, we will record this session for you, which will uh, allow a couple of things. One is, uh, of course, you'll be able to re-watch the session uh, and, and look at anything again uh, that you saw during today's session. But it also allows you to share it with someone else within your organisation, someone else that's going through the, the year-end process or a piece of the year-end process, because as you'll see, we run through a number of the key and critical modules separately. So let's, let's get started. And we want to highlight, firstly, something that we've again put together for you. We actually have the year-end procedures for a number of the key modules in Dynamics GP already prepared and presented for you. So with this link, uh, it takes you through to our, uh, our website where we actually have that information prepared and presented for you to be able to download. And if you scroll down through, there's a couple of tips and tricks there for you, a couple of really key pieces of information that we'll actually go through as well as part of this presentation. But right down the very bottom, there is actually the, the procedures for key modules. And you'll see we've actually broken that down into different versions of GP. So we even go right back to Dynamics GP version 10. Now, a little bit of a side note, we hope not many people are still running version 10, but hey, if you're still running version 10, we still have procedures there for you that you can look at to help you with your year end. Now, one of the reasons we do that on all those modules is because even though GP, uh, the process around year end hasn't changed a lot, um, the visuals, so the user interface has actually changed through those modules. So we actually separate those modules there for you. So joining me today is Ruth Sureta. Now, Ruth is one of our senior GP support consultants here within the PA team. And Ruth, I think it's fair to say Ruth's done a number of year-end processes over the years, but also helped answer a lot of the questions for clients regarding their year-end. So it's great that Ruth can actually put this presentation for us today and share it with you. So on that note, I'll hand over to Ruth. Thanks, Ruth. Thank you, Michael, and thank you everyone for joining our live webinar. Um, we know that year-end process is a crucial step and can be the busiest time of the year for you. And some of you might even be their first time to run the year-end process. Or you could be doing this for quite some time, but since it happens once a year, um, this is a good time to refresh us with the steps. Today we're going to discuss three areas in year-end closing. The first part would be utilities and then the year-end process for sub-ledgers, and the final part is the year-end closing for general ledger. So the manuals, um, before you do the year-end, we would suggest that you download the, the document that Michael um, presented you earlier, because these manuals actually outline both the summary and detailed steps of the year-end process. You'll also find some very useful um, answers to 
common questions during year end process. And so, but pretty much what we're going to discuss today, it's going to be all in those uh, manuals. So let's get started with some important facts. If you have been using GP for quite some time, you know um, that year end process is not reversible. But the good news is on versions GP 2013 R2 and higher, this is now available. It now allows you to reopen the most recent historical year, which means, say, if you close fiscal year 2017, and for whatever reason you need to open them, the system will now allow you to do so. But regardless if you have this feature or not, and I'm sure we have heard this so many times, you must back up your database before commencing the year-end process. This just gives you a peace of mind that in case something happens, we can always restore from the backup. When you do the year-end, we also recommend that all users are out of Great Plains. If you have multiple companies, you must at least have the users out of the company where you're doing the year-end process. And finally, you don't need to wait for the auditors before you roll the year. Because if you need to do any adjustments, you can still post to the most recent historical year, and it will update the beginning balance and the retained earnings automatically. So what does the year end process do in general ledger? If you are maintaining account and transaction history, the year end closing routine transfers all current year information for each account in the chart of accounts to history table. It also transfers the current profit and loss amount to the retained earnings account, and then it zeroes out all the PNL accounts ready for the new um, year. It then creates the opening balance for the, for the new year. Also, in the year and closing, you have option to remove inactive accounts with zero balances. And finally, it prints the year-end closing report, which lists the accounts that were closed and the transactions that were created to close those accounts. So you need to save this report for your company's um, permanent record. And just to take note, this, is, this report is actually cannot be reprinted, so you need to actually um, save it. Prior to doing your actual year-end process, you still need to complete your regular month and process for all modules, which includes posting of batches, reconciling of your subledgers to the general ledger, and running of all month and reports. Then you need to set up the fiscal year and tax year. So we'll quickly show you in GP. how to set up your fiscal year. So if you go GP, you go tools, set up, company, financial period. If your new year is not available in the year um, drop-down box, example for this um, on the screen, you can see 2016 and 2017. If you're going to set up 2018 and you can't find it, you just need to um, enter that year, as simple as that. So type in 2018, and then ensure that the number of periods and the, the first and last day are correct. So for that one, we got 12 periods for this um, demonstration. And we the first day is 01 um, July 2017 up until 30 um, June 20, 2018. So when you're happy with that one, just click on Calculate. And then you just have to go through each period just to make sure that all the, the dates, the begin dates of your period are correct. You can also change the period name to a more descriptive um, name, like say July, or you can leave it as it is. And then just simply click OK and your new year is already set up. So you also need to configure your tax period. So you just need to do the same process. And click OK. 
So for um, your practices, you can probably, um, once you create the new year, you can close all the periods just so if you're not ready to post any transactions for the new fiscal year, users are restricted to post to the new um, fiscal year. So regardless if you're going to do the year-end process or if you're going to delay them, you still need to configure your new fiscal and tax year so that all, um, so that all users are allowed to process their new transactions on the new fiscal year. Then finally, you can complete your backup. And you may need to involve your IT to do this, or you can call support um, to help you create the backup on the database server. Another thing that you need to prepare prior to doing your actual year end closing is the, you need to run through what we call the file maintenance utilities. Reconcile is one of them, and the other is check links. So Reconcile basically checks for data accuracy among associated tables. It pretty much recalculates the total based on your detailed transactions. So say, for example, so say, for example, you inquiry screen in financial, um, and you have your summary, and you've noticed that your period balance is incorrect. Um, you just need to run Reconcile, and what it does, it actually goes through the detailed um, table or the detailed inquiry screen, and then it sums it up, and then it calculates the, the new total for the summary window. So you can actually use this. Um, so for the financial, if you go Tools, Utilities, Financial, and Reconcile, so you can actually use this feature um, not only for year-end. This is actually um, useful um, for when you find that your reports um, have inconsistencies on the, the figures. You can actually run Reconcile just to make sure that it, the totals are um, correct based on the transaction details. So this um, tool is, only, is available not only for financial, but it's, only avail it's also available for sales, for purchasing, for inventory. Um, so it's all available in those modules. Normally, Reconcile can be found in tools, utilities. Although you may run this each module separately on a quarterly or even during your month end process, Microsoft recommends running Reconcile on this order during year end process. So from sales to purchasing to inventory, then project, receivables, payables, and general ledger. So if you don't use some of these modules, you don't have to go through them. So we'll just go through the reconcile in um, GP. So when you go tools, utilities, you can see sales, purchasing, inventory, and financial. So under sales, there's actually two reconcile utilities. One is available for the sales order processing uh, module, and the other one is for the receivables. So from the order that uh, Microsoft has recommended, you go through the sales um, module first, but this doesn't have an, any year-end process, um, this module. So you just pretty much um, click on, um, tick on reconcile sales documents, and then click on process. And then you can print the, the screen on um, screen or on paper. So if there's no error message, it's going to, so this is actually a demo data um, company. So it has minimal transactions. So the reconcile process really depends on the size of your database. So for this demonstration purposes, we can see that the reports are actually, and the tools are running re fairly quickly. It's because we don't have much transactions in the, in the system. So once you run um, sales, you go, the next one is purchasing, and then you take the reconcile and print reports and click on process. So if there are any errors or um, recalculation, it, sh you sh it should display on your report. And then you go inventory and reconcile. So in the Reconcile screen, you can see Include Item History. So let's run this one. So 
So in this da d demo data uh, database, we have around 250 items, just so you can gauge how long it takes. Uh, so for this test database, it's 250, but yes, I said there's really no transactions um, in this company. So up, if you can check at the moment, it's running up until four, uh, 15%. So that's why we we need to do a bit of planning when you do the reconcile for the, the for the um, ledgers because um, it may take a while or it may not depending on the size of your database. So some reconcile, um, they do print reports, and some uh, don't print reports. So then you then run the reconcile for receivables. So that's the one at the top. So if you, if you can see, there are different options per module. So for receivables and payables, they got more um, options available. So from here, you actually need to go through each of them. So you just want to reconcile your current setter information, outstanding um, document amounts, batch information. So every time you go through this process, the, the window closes out once it's done. So you need to go back and then just go through each of the options. And then from here, um, you can leave the reconcile date as it is, because it reconciles pretty much all the transactions in the database. And the next is the payables. So from here, you can see a similar option. You have uh, reconcile for summary, financial, or calendar, and then batches. Um, you don't need to run for workflow. Um, it's a, it's, you don't need that for the uh, year end. So you also have the option whether to print the report or reconcile. So if you tick them both, it will um, reconcile straight away and generate the report. But if you unmark the reconcile, then you can actually see what uh, it does before you do the actual reconcile. And then finally, reconcile the financial year. Um, if you go to utilities, financial, reconcile, and you can take all these options and then run reconcile. So the other utilities that you need to run is check links. This utility checks for data consistency between related tables. So let's say for an invoice, although you see it in one window, the system actually stores the information in various tables. So there's one table for the header record, one for the distribution table, and one for the tax table. And when you run check links, what it does is it goes through and verifies that it has valid links between those tables and making sure that the data are intact. It pretty much compares the header and detail records and potentially re rebuild or remove damage or missing data. This tool, as a, uh, similarly to Reconcile, it's not exclusive for year-end process, and you can run this when necessary. But for year-end routine, what we like to tell the customer is to run this utility's prior year-end rollover. Well, you may do this on the day, but it may take some time. As I said earlier, it really depends on the size of your database. Reconcile and check links may run for half an hour to three hours to go through each series. And if you have really large companies, like some of our clients, they do this overnight or over the weekend. That's why we recommend that you do some planning around this and run them um, the week before you do your actual year end. So if you have no clue how long it takes, because um, really we can't gauge for you how long it's going to take, but if you want to do like a test, maybe do this on a test company and so that you would know um, how long it takes and then you can do it on your um, live database. Otherwise, some, some of you guys who've done year end in the past, you, you already have um, an estimate how long um, check links and reconcile um, runs. So where do we see check links? Um, check links 
can be run under maintenance. Um, and it's available for the core series in Great Plains from project accounting to financial theory. If you're not using some of the modules like project accounting, then you can leave them out. So let's check check link. So if you go Microsoft Dynamics GP Maintenance Check Links. So from here, you can select all the series that you need to run the check links against. So you can run sales, purchasing, inventory, and financial. So pretty much just select the series and then click um, select all to insert all the um, logical tables. And then just click OK to run check links. So we'll let this one run. I uh, don't know how long it will take. But pretty much, uh, that's part one of our discussion. The utilities um, for prior to doing your actual year end. Just so um, you, know, you can prepare. Because the actual year end is quite, um, when you run it, it's not, it doesn't take so much time. So the check links actually um, runs through all the tables and the bulk of the data. That's why it may take. Um, longer time. So for part two, we are going through the subledger year-end routines. So we recommend doing the year-end for the subledger modules on time before posting transactions for the new year. You may enter transactions for the new year and save them in a batch first and wait after the year-end close before posting them. So you can perform your subledger um, year end before you're ready to do your general ledger. So the subledgers that we're talking about is the inventory, receivables, payables, and fixed assets. So when you're done with all the um, posting and adjustment, we need to close the fiscal and tax period to prevent users from posting further transactions of, on your subledgers. So this may also be part of your month-end process, but if not, you just go ahead and close the periods for all subledgers. So some of our clients, when, they, when they're done with their month-end, so let's just check. OK, so it already printed the report. It's done for the check links. So if you go to tool setup, company, financial period, and some of the clients, what they do is during month-end process, they close the period. Um, once they to prevent users from posting any more transactions for that um, period. If you don't practice this one um, prior to year end, uh, we would recommend that you close all the periods just so you know that you know all the figures before you process the year end. So to do that, just click on close all, and then just click OK. So when you go through the year and closing for subledgers uh, modules, you may find that each module may have different options available. And each routine may take from 10 minutes to more than half an hour. So it really depends on the size of your database. So for inventory, it is recommended that the year end routine process is run before transactions are entered in the new financial year. So what does it mean if you have not done the year and rollover for um, inventory, receivables, and payables, and you posted the transactions for the new year. Well, a lot of it relates on to some inquiry screen that displays last year and year-to-date information. But if you don't use those information, then it's not necessary to close the inventory before inventory transactions are entered. So for the year-end window, you will find the ability to remove certain information. And these are any discontinued items from the item records that have been completely sold, any lot attributes from the records of lot number items if they've been completely sold. You can also, have, um, you can also remove purchase receipts for items and cost change history which will remove the transaction and distribution history, which we normally do not recommend. But if for whatever reason you need to, 
then at least you know that this option is available. And lastly, there's also an option to update the standard cost of each item to current cost if you're using FIFO and periodic or LIFO periodic valuation methods. So these are all optionals, and you don't have to do them if you want to keep those information. So let's just quickly go to um, the inventory year end window. So if you go tools, um, routines, inventory, year end closing, you'll see all the options um, we've discussed. And if you want any of them, if you want to remove any of those information, you can just tick, tick them. Otherwise, you can leave it as it is and click on process. So uh, the year end in inventory does not actually print um, any report. So that's pretty much quick. Um, so for receivables management, um, so this is the quick overview of what needs to be done during year end routine. So similarly in all subledgers, you should post all sales and receivables batches for the year. Make a backup of the year and closing um, process because this um, the year and process for subledgers isn't reversible. Then proceed with the year and closing to close the calendar or fiscal year for a receivables transaction. And then close any financial um, periods that are still open for the year. Then take another backup. So what happens when I close the year on receivables management? The closing routine updates the year to date and last year fields in the amount since last close view in debtor summary window and in summary reports. The year end routine only affects the summary table. It doesn't update your um, detailed transaction table. So that means if you go here, card, sales, and you go summary. So you can see the year to date and the last year. So when you do the year end, and um, so say for example, you need to post a transaction and you haven't done the year end uh, process. Although we recommend that you do the year end on time, the system will still allow you to post transactions to, um, sorry, it will still allow you to post to historical year. The only affected window is um, this one. But since it only updates the summary table, you can always go to this window and change the details. You can also see that um, in the summary view, there's also an option whether to view financial year or amount since last close. So if you're not using those, those um, fields and you're not really um, but some, some organization, they don't necessarily report out on those areas. They may use ClickSense or Board or other BI tools. OK. So for similarly in receivables, you need to post all transactions in payables as well. Print, uh, print all the necessary reports, the trial balance. And you also have to make a backup and then close the year, and then close the financial year. So what does payable uh, year end closing does in Great Plains? It updates the current figures and last year amounts in both summary and amounts in last close view in the vendor year summary inquiry screen, which is um, similar to the receivables as we've shown earlier. So as I said, since it only updates the summary table, you can always manually edit these fields to reflect the correct value in case you need to post transactions prior to year end closing. So the so you can actually do the year end um, if you're not ready to to do the closing for your general ledger. Now let's go to fixed assets. You'll find here in the overview um, what needs to be done during year end for fixed asset modules. So unlike the previous subledgers we have discussed so far, 
this routine must be completed before you can run depreciation for the new year. So until you do the year end, the system will actually not allow you to run any depreciation. It actually detects that, say for example, for 2017, you need to close 2017 and you, and let's say for example, a user needs to run depreciation for 2018, the system knows that 2017 is not yet closed, unlike in other models. And so it will be prompted that you cannot run any transactions or depreciation for the current year. So you have to close that before you do the depreciation. And the only module that you need to consider closing before um, fixed asset is payables management. This is to ensure that all transactions coming from payables have been capitalized in the fixed asset system. And this is only true if you're using um, the interface from purchase, purchasing to FA. If not, then pretty much you can do this before you run the year end for other subledgers. So same process, you enter and post all activities for the current year, you run the depreciation for all assets to the last day of the current financial year for the book that you're closing. So you must um, see to it that it's completed up until the last day. Then process the GL interface, run all the necessary reports, um, specifically those reports which include um, year-to-date and depreciation amount. Then you need to ensure that your FA calendar is built um, correctly and there's no missing dates. Then when you're done with all those checklists, you just have to close the year. And you also have the option to run the year and at a separate time for each fixed asset um, book. So if we go to um, GP, we'll have a look at the, so the things that you need to, uh, we want to highlight in fixed asset is you go to um, tools, setup, and then um, fixed assets, and then you go calendar. And then just select the calendar. And then from here, um, you can click on verify. This is to make sure that there are no missing um, dates. So when you print the report, it should say, um, OK. If there's any error message, you need to correct them. You need to rebuild your calendar before you can do the, the year end. Otherwise, you're going to get error message during year end process. And then from here, you go tools, routines, fixed assets, and then year end. You'll see all the modules that you have. You can have one or more. So you have the option whether to run um, the year end for, say, for example, here, I have internal. I can um, choose to just run the year end for this book and then run the other um, year end for the other books. So it's up to you whether you can select one or you can close all your books. And then just print it, print the report. And so you just have to save these um, reports for your record purposes. So now we will go through the last part, which is the most important part of the year end, the general ledger. So this is an overview of the things we need to check. And as we go through the list, we just want to highlight some key things that you need to take note. And, and those are items three. Verify all accounts are set up with correct posting type. And item six, verify settings in the GL setup window. And we'll go through those um, in GP later on. So after closing your subledger modules, and by the time you get to the final GL year and closing, you're pretty much familiar with most of the steps on the list, like posting the necessary final adjusting entries, if you close the year and find out you still need to do some adjustments, um, the system has the feature to allow you to post back to the most recent historical year, and the system will automatically update the retained earnings and opening balances. So for step three, you need to ver verify all accounts are set up with the correct posting type, because the system uses the posting type to determine whether the account should be close to the retained earnings account at the end of the year or the balance have the balance brought forward to the next year. So to help us identify these accounts with incorrect posting, we'll check our smart list report um, later on. 
So next, um, close the last period of the fiscal year. Then run the file maintenance on the financial series and those check links um, and reconcile. So one other thing that we need to show is the checking of the general ledger settings and making sure they are correct. Once you've done those steps, we need to make a backup, print all the necessary reports such as detailed trial balance, your financial statements, maybe you're using management reporter or FRX, um, you can get those information from your reports. And then when you're done, you just have to close the year and then do another backup. So step four, um, item three, we want to ensure that all posting types are correct. Otherwise, your year-end journal figure might be skewed. So the posting type could be balance sheet or profit and loss. If the account's balance is brought forward at the end of the year, it should be set up as balance sheet. If the account's balance will be close to a retained earnings account at the end of the year, it should be set up as a profit and loss posting type. And to help us search for accounts that are incorrect, so we can actually use SmartList to verify whether you have um, incorrect um, posting type for your account. So I've made one already for balance sheets. So if you go search, it says here that the main account segment is between 000 to 399. I'm sure that this account should be balance sheet. So I'll just put in my other search definition, posting type is equal to profit and loss. And if it returns, then I would know that it, this account is incorrectly um, configured. So my cash um, account should be a balance sheet. But for, for some reason, it's set up as profit and loss. And so before you do the UN, you just need to make sure that you correct this one. So you, ha you highlight the account number, double click on it, and then it will um, bring you to the account maintenance screen and simply click on um, balance sheet and save the changes. So when you do the refresh, it should now um, dis display zero um, results. So that's for your balance sheet accounts. You can do another one for your P&L. So we'll go through it. So you go to the star um, to display all your accounts. You go search, and you go, I'll go main, main account segment. And I'll put east between. And I know for a fact that my 4,999 accounts are my P&L accounts. So I put posting type. And I say is equal to balance sheet. So I know, so this result tells me that these are all incorrect. So before I do the year end, I need to make sure that I correct them. And then you can save that favorite. Once you're done with the search, you've configured all the parameters, you go favorite, and then put a name on your report, say incorrect, PNL account. and add, and it will create another entry. So thus, you can leave that one so that next time, you know, you can quickly check whether a new user um, created a new account and um, correct, incorrectly set up the, the posting type. So another window that you need to go through before year-end is the general ledger setup. If you want, um, let's have a look. We want to make sure that these are all set up correctly. If you want to keep historical records, which we normally do, uh, we want to make sure that the maintain history option for accounts and transactions are marked in this window. Otherwise, if it's not marked, when you do the year-end, it's going to delete your um, it won't be available in your trial balance report. So let's go to Great Plains. Tools. 
if you go to Microsoft Dynamics CP tool set up financial general ledger. So you see these options um, maintain history, accounts and transactions. Transaction history allows you to print de historical detailed um, trial balances and it allows you to drill down to transaction details. Both, both account history and transaction history are updated during the year-end process. So you need to make sure that these options are marked. You also have to ensure that the retained account, um, the retained earnings account is um, correct. So from for this exercise, we have 000, as you can see, 303000. Um, so if you're using divisional, um, close to divisional account, this, is, this should be sh um, marked. And you need to make sure that all retained account earnings um, for each elected division is set up. So once your configuration um, are correct and the reports have been printed, you can actually take a backup and run the year end. We go dynamics to routines, financial, and year-end closing. So from this screen, you have another um, chance to double-check your retained earnings account. And then from here, you have um, additional optional um, that you can do. You can remove unused segment numbers, or you can maintain inactive accounts. So if you have accounts that you've marked as inactive, you need to make sure that you tick this one when you do the year end. Otherwise, all inactive accounts are going to be removed. So this one, is it allows you to um, maintain it and keep a record of it. So you have the option to select with budget amounts or all inactive accounts. So for example, there's an inactive account but doesn't have any budget amounts. Um, it can be removed if you just select um, with budget uh, amounts. So you tick all inactive accounts. And then from here, you can see the reverse historical year button and the last closing date um, progress bar. So when you're happy with the configuration, you just have to click on close here. So once you hit the close um, year button, it will go through the year end process. And, it, and although we cannot estimate how much time it will take, um, the progress bar can come up really handy because uh, handy you just just so you know how how far along you are. So in as you can see from the screen, um, this is not applicable for uh, users who do not use analytical accounting because I have um, analytical accounting in my install. That's why you're going to see the AA year end um, closing report as well. And then. The year end closing report is the report that you need to print, and you need to uh, make sure that you print this because you won't be able to reprint um, this information. So as you can see, we've run um, the year end, and it took um, quite fast. So once the when it's done, it prints the year-end closing report, as you've seen earlier, which lists the accounts that were closed and the transactions that were created to close those accounts. So you may save this report for your company's permanent records. As I said, it cannot be reprinted. And then <clears throat> you can also reprint the reports you've generated earlier prior to closing the year, and you can compare and make sure they, the expected results are the same. So when you're done, simply close all the fiscal um, periods for all series, take a backup. And as we pointed earlier, um, you can do adjustment after your year end. The system will allow you to, to do the posting to most um, recent historical years. So for the remaining um, of the slides, these are um, catered for users who use analytical accounting uh, module. If you're on GP10 and below, there is no year in process for analytical accounting. But for GP um, version 10 with service back to and above, the year in routine is now part of the GL year in close. So it's actually performed automatically during year end, and you don't have to do anything else. As you, as you can see from my screen earlier, 
um, the AA report has been um, generated after doing the GL year end. So there's not um, a year-end routine for AA, as it happens in the background when you do GL year-end. But what the year-end does for AA is it transfers um, all current year um, data for each account to the account um, transaction history for all transaction dimensions. But you also have the option to transfer them manually under utilities. And to use this, you need to make sure that you're logged on as SA to prevent um, permission errors. So you need to use the system administrator login. And then you can print the report and then keep it for your, um, for, for your permanent record. So that's pretty much our year-end closing routine. Um, so to recap the process, we've touched on the file maintenance utilities, um, which probably will take most of the time uh, of, to process. Then we've discussed the subledger year-end routine, which could take the least amount of time. And the final part is the GL year-end routine, which is the most important one. Um, and this process is company-specific. So if you have multiple companies, you may want to start with a smaller one. And then by the time you get to your main company, you're, you've already mastered the steps. And you can do this in one go or schedule them accordingly if you cannot afford users to get out of GP for a long time. So that concludes our year-end presentation. Thank you very much, Ruth. Now, I'm conscious of time, so what I'm going to do is is just quickly wrap up, but then come back to answer some questions because we've already had some questions come through. So I'm just going to do things out of order here a moment. I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to do things a little bit out of order. Uh, we'll just quickly wrap up and then uh, and then come back to questions for anyone that wants to stay on the session and have those questions uh, reviewed and answered. So so just to wrap up, um, in terms of contacting. PA. So obviously you've seen a lot of things today. Ruth's taken us through a lot of content, gone through a, a number of things across a wide range of modules. Um, if you do want to get some help from PA regarding that, you can either reach straight out to your account manager, or if you're not sure who that is, you can reach out to Eleanor, who, was, um, who instigated the session for us today, and who would have her contact details. As you exit the webinar today, Here's your opportunity to let us know if you do need our help. So we, we absolutely appreciate that this is a once-off, once, sorry, once a year process, hopefully it's once a year, uh, for, uh, for most of us. Therefore, as it's not something that you do frequently, um, it's okay to, uh, to get PA to help. Um, we also acknowledge that, that some organisations are happy to go through the process yourself and that's good. If you're not, that's okay too. We, we do help a lot of organisations through that year-end process. So as you exit the webinar today, there will be two questions that pop up on your screen for you. The first one will be your opportunity to uh, ask for our assistance and to book a consultant. If you just answer yes to that question, we'll get in touch with you and schedule that in for you. Um, I would like to just confirm for you that as you see, it is a busy period for a lot of Australian organisations. A lot of our GP clients do have a year end. So if you do want our assistance to help with that processing, please let us know quickly so we can schedule that in for you. So the scheduling of it can be in line with the time that you'd like to do your year end. So you have the chance as you exit the session today to answer yes to that question. So on that note, I would like to say thank you to Ruth uh, for taking us through the presentation today. There was a lot covered. Um, and I, I saw you had a little bit of trouble there, couldn't even take a breath for a moment, had to have a cough. So that's, that's the amount of content that was covered in this, uh, in this session. So thank you everyone for attending. And as I said, we'll now come back and answer some of those questions for you. So please, please stay on the line if you'd, uh, if you'd like to uh, listen to those questions or if you ask one specifically, we'll answer that for you now. Thanks everyone. Okay, so Ruth, in the next couple of minutes, if we can just quickly quickly answer these questions um, and we'll, we'll go through them go through them quickly together. So the first one is um, when will the recording be available to watch? So actually I can answer that one. Wow. 
Um, so we will get that out to everyone within the next 24 hours. So we do like to follow up quite quickly on that and send out a copy of the recording as a follow up for today's session. Okay, here's a very specific question. To run prior year end utilities reports, do we need to, I like this language here, kick other user, users out? <laughs> do we need to kick the users out to run that um, prior year end utility report? Oh, thank you. That's a good question. Um, to run the year-end utilities, you actually need to have everyone out of GP, or at least uh, on the company you're running the utilities, because the system will not allow you to run it if someone is in it. It will know that you're processing transactions. It will prompt you a warning that um, someone is doing a transaction. So you need to actually make all the users out of that, at least that company. Okay, excellent. Um, actually, would you believe here's another question that I can answer. So is there a step-by-step -step guide that we can obtain? The answer is yes, definitely. Um, so at the very beginning of the session we showed a link um, and it's uh, included in the slide, so you'll see that on the recording as well. That'll take you to a page where we have procedures for various versions and various modules that is a, uh, a procedures guide for year end. Uh, Okay, here's one around payables, receivables and GL. So is it possible to close off receivables and payables modules while still leaving the GL open to continue to post journals? Um, definitely, uh, yes, it's possible to close off your receivables and payables. So what uh, our customers, some of our customers, what they do is they schedule the inventory, receivables, payables and fixed asset to close off earlier and then when they're ready for their general ledger um, year-end close, uh, they do it at a later stage. So the system actually um, knows the receivables and the, it has separate uh, year-end process. So we recommend that you do your, at least do your sub-ledgers um, earlier on and then when you're ready for your GL, then do it at a later stage. Okay, excellent. Um, now here's a, it sounds like a clarification Point, we'll just turn it into a question. So the clarification is, did you say that we cannot post any future, as in in the new fiscal year, transactions until we've completed the year-end process? Okay, so the system doesn't actually stop you from posting transactions on the new fiscal year. Um, we've discussed earlier that when you do post transactions on the new year, um, on those sub-ledgers, there are information that will not be correct. And it's specifically on the inquiry screen. The system, um, when, you do, when you do the year end, it's actually updating just the summary window, which um, specifically the last year and the year to date information. So from the, um, let me just show, show you quickly. If we go back to Great Plains, So from here, if you go um, inquiry, sales, um, yearly summary, so you can see from this screen, there's actually a month since last closed view. So if you select that option and you have the year to date and the last, so this is not date sensitive. It only shows you when um, the amount since you last closed. So if you close it um, after posting transactions to the new year, then this information will be incorrect. However, um, most of the clients doesn't really use this information, plus you have this information. If you go financial year, it actually shows you the correct information. And at the same time, since it's, it's only updating the summary table, you can go card, sales, go summary, and then when you pull up that debtor ID, you can actually amend this, change this to show the correct information. So um, in line with your question, you can still post transactions to the new year prior to year end, if you're, especially if you're not using this information. But for fixed assets, you will not be able to run depreciation until you close the year. It will not allow you to run um, future dated depreciation. And for general ledger, it allows you to post anytime. It doesn't matter if you close or not, you can still post um, future dated journals. Excellent. Obviously, a good question there, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I've had a, a couple of connected questions here. One is, can we get a copy of the slides? And the other is, um, 
we showed uh, the link to that procedures uh, place within the slides. Um, so yes, we can we can show you that again uh, on the slide. So if we just go back to the very uh, one of the early slides, the link is on there. Um, I think also to help with this one, um, we'll we'll include a copy of the slides as part of the um, as part of the follow up to the webinar today. So that'll help. So that link will be in that um, in that uh, in that follow up. But if anyone wants to quickly jot it down now, uh, you, you, you're more than welcome. More than welcome to. Um, okay, another question: um, Do we have to set up a new financial year in each database separately? Yes, you do need um, the financial year is actually maintained um, separately on each company database. So. Um, it's up to you whether when you want to do the new financial financial year, but you need to do it um, separately. Okay, so that's maintained at the the company database yes, level. Yeah. Um, okay, this uh, there's a question here around backup. I'll, I'll ask the question, but I think the answer might be um, we might need to reach out and help that particular question separately. If we haven't done a backup before, how do we make a backup of a company database? So um, I think that that's probably a, a, an option for us there to, to reach out to you and that particular person. Um, I know who you are. Uh, we'll, we'll reach out to you separately and help you with that. Um, we also have another, uh, another question here around changing a year end. So um, an organisation's uh, changing from a 30 June year end to a 30 December, uh, 31 December year end. Um, so there's some questions there around how to best handle that. Um, again, I think that's that's probably better handled as a, a consulting question to actually step you through the best way to uh, to handle that one. Um, oh, okay, we've got a, a, a revisit. <laughs> um, so we missed the clarification. Is it okay to post in the new financial year even though you haven't closed the prior um, and a follow-up with fixed assets closing, you can now run depreciation for July until fixed asset year process will be complete. So maybe just maybe just clarify that. So can we post in the new financial year even though you have not closed the prior? Yes. So that's the simple year. yeah, the simple answer is yes. But for fixed assets, you need to. Um, for fixed assets, the answer is no. You won't be able to run depreciation until you close the uh, fiscal year. And fixed assets very much a, a, a periodical um, process. You actually have to go through one before you can get to the next. Yeah, anyway, correct. It genuinely, is a sequential. Um, so, uh, oh, okay. We've got another question on backup. Thank you. Yes, yes, we'll we'll. We'll help you with that. Um, and is there a checklist on the procedures to document the necessary steps? Yes. We've, yeah. we've, so that, that link there, as you see on your screen now, will take you to that checklist of procedures. The manual is actually on our website. Um, if you go to our website, pa.com.au, um, and just type in year and procedure, um, you can actually find the manual very helpful because it has summary um, steps and then it has the detailed steps as well as the checklist that you need to go through and the common questions that you probably um, need clarification. It's actually um, outlined in the in the manual. So you, you better, um, before you do any year end, we, we strongly recommend that you download um, those uh, manuals. Excellent. All right, well, look, I, I would like to again say thank you. Um, thank you to everyone for joining and thank you for staying on. Um, just to, to validate what we did now, um, it was interesting that we had a lot more people stayed on the session than asked questions. So I want to say thank you to those people that asked questions because they were obviously useful for the people that stayed on the session as well. So I think that worked quite nicely.
So on that note, I'd like to just uh, just wrap up. Thanks again to Ruth for presenting and also handling those questions there at the end. Uh, and thanks everyone for staying a little bit longer than, than first planned. I think that was uh, quite useful in that uh, Q&A session right at the very end there. We will send out a copy of the re recording and we'll include the slides in this particular follow-up. And we'll do that within 24 hours. That'll come out. Um, that'll come out sometime tomorrow for you. So thanks everyone, and have a great rest of your day. Bye.